Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins weekly infrastructure team meeting. Today we are the last day of January 2023. Um, around the table today we are six, uh, myself Damien Duportal, Bruno Varharten, Mark Waite, Kevin Martins, Stefan Merle and Hervé Lemur are there. Do we have six bullets? Yes, we have six bullets in the notes. Let's get started with announcement. So weekly 2,389, or 88, nine, yep. In progress, checklist in progress. Uh, yeah, nothing to say, no issue. No, my one of my close mirror actually has it already. So yes, it's it's going fine. Cool. Uh, another announcement, <laughs> artifact caching proxy. So uh, that's a topic, uh, that's a top priority topic for today's, for today. Um, but the idea, I propose that we just announce it now and we get in details uh, in the upcoming tasks. Uh, but uh, we plan to today or tomorrow enable the artifact caching proxy for all plugin builds on CI Jenkins IO. The goal is to decrease as soon as possible the amount of data downloaded from our repo Jenkins CI chiffre ghosted system. Um, an email will be sent to the developer list at least one hour before doing that. We have one last mile uh, to, to finish, but every performances test that we did so far were really, really good. So yeah. That should be a good direction. Just for information I proposed earlier to Hervé and Stefan, we might create a dedicated issue just for the, the switch opt-in to uh, opt, uh, opt out to opt-in. So um, because that issue will serve as a kind of documentation, because one of the main thing is that if anyone has an issue, it will be easier to have every contributor to uh, add a comment with a specific build and a link. And the body, the initial body of the issue will show, hey, if your build is slow, relaunch it one or twice, check this and this, and you will see the real timing with impact there. Because yeah, there might be a feeling of slow build that could be le leading to either agent taking time to be spawned, which is absolutely unrelated to the, to the ACP itself, and the variability were on performances in tests. And since the perceived timing is the Maven command that builds and run tests, we don't have an easy way except going into the build output and looking at timestamps of two specific lines. Otherwise, we don't have a way to say it took that time, that much time to download dependencies and that much time to build and that much time to test. The information is there, but not easily available. So the goal is to have a, a provide a quick manual on the dedicated issue, just to help developers. Um, calendar, unless you have other announcement. Nope. So Actually, next. So uh, yep. I've I've got a red flag. I'll I'll flag separately the Docker containers. We just published 2.379 as a container image, not 2.389. I'm a little perplexed by that. Okay, no, no, no separate topic, not for this okay. meeting. Needs can you okay, can you just open an issue on help desk? <laughs> I will open a help open. desk issue. Yes, cool. I'm just perplexed. Uh, thanks, Mark. So we'll look at that uh, right after. So next week, Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, we will have the 2.390 weekly release. Is that correct? Yeah. That's correct. We can also announce we are, won't be uh, present. We will be at the first time at the end of the week. Oh, yes. In announcement, good point. I thought that was major event. Yeah, 
You're right. So, so I think it's an open well, question. Well, Should we cancel this meeting next week, Tuesday? Because given that you're you're all going to be in in Belgium on Saturday and Sunday all day, or is is it okay if we continue with this meeting next week? I would keep a, a light one. Okay. Yep. Plus one with Stefan. Okay. Next Tuesday, good points. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Stefan. Um, next LTS is next week. Is it uh, Wednesday, if I'm correct? So 2.375.3. The Wednesday. 8th of, of February. February, is that correct? That's correct. And Alex Brandis is the release lead. At least that's my recollection. Cool. Next security release. So we had one last week that went very well. So thanks uh, folks for looking. It was the 25, it was announced the day before and we don't have any other public announcements. So no security release. Other major event or announcement or calendar item? Okay, so let's get started with the work that is considered finished since last week. Uh, we were able to finally migrate in trusted CI Jenkins IO, all the jobs in charge of deploying the releases of Docker Jenkins agent images, the base image, the inbound agent image, and the SSH agent image. Uh, we haven't seen uh, that infamous git polling log again. Uh, so we had the release that happened on a Docker agent that was picked automatically as expected. And there are two upcoming uh, updates on SSH agent and inbound agent uh, earlier, uh, later today. So everything is far. The former job has been uh, archived. It has been backupped. So now let's watch it uh, over time, but yeah, good news. We should not, I hope we shouldn't have any more uh, latest image embedding a really a two years old uh, agent.jar version. Thanks Stefan for the help and everyone involved in that one. No question? Um, a valid certificate for trusted CI. So it was already done last week for the initial certificate. And now uh, the renewal is automated as code using DNS. So next step, we should be able to fit, uh, to set as code the world renewal for cert CI Jenkins IO. What was new is that we weren't managing DNS uh, challenge for Let's Encrypt in the Puppet virtual machine architecture. We were using DNS challenge only in our Kubernetes cluster. Now, what we learn with that issue is that we know how to define a sub DNS zone, only create a technical Azure account that is only allowed to manage record in that sub DNS zone and use that DNS account using a full Puppet configuration to ensure a proper Let's Encrypt renewal, which mean that technical account is not allowed to manage other records than the one of its zone, of its subzone. Works very well. So we should do the same for cert CI Jenkins IO. So we will benefit from automatic renewal of the certificate that has been manually created. So that was also a big team effort uh, on different area. Thanks team, thanks Survey, thanks Stefan, thanks Mark, and thanks Vadek and Daniel for pointing out the correct element. Uh, just a note, we had to go pretty deep dive inside the uh, certbot and puppet modules 
And again, we face the fact that yeah, pets start to be really old and it starts to worry me. In terms of maintenance, that's not an easy step only for installing a few packages. But that's just a food for thought, no uh, direct action. Any question? Uh, remove deprecated plugin handlebars from our instances. So we had a warning message on the Jenkins controller, like every user. We removed the plugin either manually for the virtual machine. We went on the UI, uninstall plugin, restart controller, and that's okay. Or on the Docker images, it was for weekly, it was present. It was removed from the Docker image. And once the new Docker image without the plugin within was installed, we were able to uninstall it properly. In the case of the Docker image, it's because the plugin lifecycle embedded on the image is different than the Jenkins home pl installed plugin. There is a guide, a pull request for a guide on how to uninstall it on the official Jenkins CI slash Docker that could benefit from on that. Um, but I forgot to record when done that. So I think uh, that should be uh, outside Jenkins infra, uh, uh, let's say help for the person writing that, but we could help on that area. Well, that, that's a that's a Kevin and and I have that topic. We know that 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 Docker pull request to document how to uninstall a plugin, and I think ultimately we'll want that on Jenk on www.jenkins.io as part of the official documentation. It's yep. it's yep. complicated, and we probably want to find a better way to do it for Docker container for container images. But right now, we should describe what we have. Yeah. I don't think you will find a better way, alas. The way, no, I mean, the, the way it works, or, or you will have to change all the plugin things on Jenkins, which is hard. <laughs> I, I was you, thinking rsync minus minus delete, but I know that you and I that, have a different. No, it's just that it wouldn't work as soon as you restart if the plugin is still on the Docker image, then it will. Uh, will be reinstalled on the Jenkins home. I have a solution. You create a temporary RAM disk mounted on Jenkins home slash plugins, and you're done. I mean, that, that's not bad. It's not a faster startup for Jenkins, because you need to seek read the files. However, that ensure that anyone try to install a plugin for experimentation, you just have to restart the container or the pod. And you still you again have the exact set of plugin mm. from the image. Interesting idea. I like that. That Creative. could be a recommendation, but you need enough memory to load the whole plugin set uncompressed in memory. That's the and and with some of our plugins being hundreds of megabytes, that may not be the, a desirable thing. Never it's so never so more than eight hundred megabyte on production. To be quite honest. Have you, have you, well, separate topic, <laughs> separate topic. Um, artifact caching. So both AWS plus digital ocean on one side and Azure on the other side have been fixed. Um, I'm not sure it's worth going into details uh, on what happened. A lot of, he, of things changed. The last very well-known state was working well beginning of December. And then the migration of GFrog changed a lot of a lot of things. So we had to fix these elements. We also had the issue low level with Kubernetes uh, on AWS. I broke the cluster by updating a Terraform module uh, a bit brutally, and it has uh, let's say major changes not backward compatible. Uh, Digital Sun was still working well, and in the case of Azure, we face something we don't understand. It was slow as hell and suddenly it worked. So the good thing is that now everything worked and we can proceed. Everything has been logged on these issues. So thanks a lot, again, the team effort. A lot of, uh, let's say, uh, I forgot the name. Uh, I already did a lot of EV lifting in 2022. Stefan helped me a lot uh, on pairing last week. Um, so thanks everyone on that element. The word you're looking for is rubber ducking. <laughs> fair. fair. That's fair. Um, SQL queries to run on plugin yield score database. Thanks, survey for helping uh, Adrian the plugin yield score system. Sounds like he solved his latest issue. 
IRC bot Jenkins admin is offline. Um, we kicked the pod, updated to the latest image, and it worked again. Any doubt? Same for, same Sorry. for the playing services. Sorry? Same for playing, same same for the for playing. service. Uh, we don't have yeah. any issue about it, but uh, Daniel yeah. mentioned it on uh, Jenkins Safra IRC that the uplink service was. Yep. Uh, the dashboard wasn't an, uh, accessible. We re would kick with uh, killed uh, all five replica and had to restart it. Worked. Yeah, but still, we, we, we tried to, to, to save it, so it was, it was easy at the end, but we, we did try to find out something. Uh, uh, we can't tell also, thanks, uh, folks. The thing is, we can't tell if any data was lost. By data lost, I mean not the database itself, but the data sent by telemetry to the service while it was in that word state. Uh, that data might be lost if it wasn't committed properly on the database. Sounds like that the logs were incomplete, so we don't really understand what happened there. So thanks, Daniel, for pointing that out and helping us. Now the three of us have administration access to the uplink dashboard service. And so with this... A... Sorry? There is an unknown about it. Uh, this service is sending uh, logs to Sentry. Uh, but oh, good point, we don't know in the current team how to access the Sentry account. If there is any. Yep. I've Do asked, you... uh, yep. Yes. I've asked uh, Olivier on IRC, but no response yet. We might okay. have to contact uh, Tyler. Okay, in any case, we will uh, see Olivier physically Friday, so we can kidnap him until he answered to us. No that's, food for him. That's a bit more difficult for Tyler. I'm not sure that our uh, employers will uh, expense the travel for kidnapping Tyler, but we never know. <laughs> that IO account, we need to get access. Olivier, Tyler. Mark, uh, are you aware of that Sentry service? I'm, or, I'm or aware that there is a Sentry service and that Tyler was deeply involved in it. And uh, Baptiste Matus, I believe, also is aware of it because oh. there was a part of it that was used for, um, for the thing called Essentials. But I don't know uh, if Baptiste's uh, involvement was actually in this particular aspect of it or just related to essentials okay. we should we should just also move the postgres database to a new one yep. absolutely that's that's in the new, new to do no update a link no but uh, yeah i can no. add it to the new to do yeah now for me it's, a, it's another L desk. Yeah. Okay. 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 To be migrated into our flexible instance. The reason of changing is because that was that is a standard PostgreSQL instance that has some limitation. Since then we have created a new PostgreSQL server instance, which currently hosts already free database, plugin ill service, rating, and the key cloak. So uh, that will be a matter of creating the database, migrating the data, and changing the configuration of the application. Um, advantage of the new kind of server, PostgreSQL Flexible, is that it's flexible, as its name implies. Uh, it has a high availability uh, possibility, and that's also a single entry point for us to manage databases. It costs less. The only downside that we discovered is that you cannot use multiple virtual network on Azure to reach the same database instance. So when, like some people there, you try to migrate some services from one network to the other, uh, you will have interruption of service. So you need to find creative way for not breaking the service. More to come in the future. Well, what a teaser. 
good catch, folks. Thanks. No question about done uh, work being done. Uh, sorry, about work already done. Now we switch to the work being done. We had an issue about renew the signer certificate for Jenkins. So we absolutely need to work on this one. The idea was to work uh, with Olivier and Mark, especially Olivier, if we can see it. Mark, I saw that you updated and you had information. Yeah, I think, so I've confirmed that I can log into DigiCert and I can see the certificate that was issued. So I think you and I, Damien, can do it and create a runbook for ourselves. It just needs some more investigation. I'd propose you and I will spend some time tomorrow and possibly Thursday. And and then if I remember correctly, you're you're at FOSDEM already on Friday, correct? So yes. So but if tomorrow and Thursday we make progress, great. If we have questions, you can always ask those questions to Olivier when you see him at FOSDEM. Okay. So for me, it it feels like we're at a good point. We've got the weekly release done now. So tomorrow we could start on it and the next weekly release will be a few sure, days yeah. yet. So if we make some mistake, we can we have time to recover. Okay. Um, is it okay if we delay the usage of the new certificate to after the LTS? Because yes, yes. we suppose them then weekly, then LTS, it feels uh, risky. I'm 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 perfectly fine with that. Then I would think what we ought to do is let's accept that you and I will work on it after the LTS next week. Because yeah. I don't want to touch the, the working configuration. I can do research that doesn't modify the working configuration, but I don't want to alter anything in the working configuration until yeah. after that LTS. That sounds fine to me. And also, it's, is it okay for everyone if we keep those two issues open? One is about documenting the process while the other is about renewing it. Yes. Is that okay for everyone? Yeah, I... I, I I was embarrassed to realize that when Olivier and I did this the last time three years ago, we obviously did not create a runbook. I know that oh, he and I did it. And so, so, but, but there's no entry, there's no documentation that I could find anywhere. Let's work on it after the 2.375.3, yes, thank you. No, no objection on my proposal, it's just I fear that with all, everything, I don't want to pack and to take any risk. I like that. I think that's, and and we've got another, what, at least 30 days before it expires. I think it may have been 60. I don't remember what DigiSearch warning was. I think it was 60. I think it's March. It's beginning of March. So we should have plenty of time, but after the LTS, that should be good. Right. Yeah. 60. So January 29, they alerted us we expire in 60 days. 60 days is plenty of time for us to to, to do this, to give ourselves another week. Expiration in 16 or 60? Six, Six zero. Yeah. 50 plus 10. It's just my French here. I, it's I always understand. merging, but I prefer I, I, I understand, exactly. Thanks, Num Mark. Ten, pronouncing six, numbers is a bad choice. It's a six, uh, the digit six. Five fifty plus ten. <laughs> ten times six or six times ten. Four times twenty, like a yeah, no, that's eighty. That's wrong. But minus twenty and <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, thanks, Mark, for documenting this. So same. Uh, let's work on it. Uh, after I will, I'll take care of moving the issues on the correct milestone. Don't want to bother you. Okay, next issue, work in progress, bump the Terraform module for AWS EKS. So bumping that module version still uh, had consequences until today. Uh, it has been updated with the fixes we had to do on the EKS cluster last week to make the AWS ACP work again. Um, some of these elements were manually done to quickly fix the issue. We now have, before closing that issue, there still have Terraform uh, changes to do. The main problem that has been documented is that the load balancer 
try to automatically find the backend IPs. However, it uses a tag tags to watch which subnets host the correct backend IP, and it should only have one. But two subnets are tagged by Terraform with the same tag. And it's a remnant from all the backward compatibility changes done on the Terraform EKS module that we bumped on the major version. So the latest version should have everything required to manage these tags, but right now I've moved it manually, which means we could still have the repo AWS breaking. So I documented everything on that issue. If anyone see an issue and I'm not there, please look carefully on what has been done manually on that issue. That's basically going to AWS console and remove a tag, like you select a load balancer, then you go to the associated network and you remove a tag and five minutes after it's fixed automatically. You don't have anything else to do. That one should be fixed. I plan to finish working on it. This milestone, unless someone objects, anyone interested in following up uh, is welcome to mention themselves on the issue. Almost finished, but ACP is now working. So ACP itself, now that it's working everywhere, it now has two replicas on each of the three clusters. So we now have six pods running, each one with its own caching. The goal of replication is that when we operate clusters, we don't want people building on CI Jenkins IO starting to have downloads error with the Maven builds. So we can operate and the thing will first restart one and then the second. Second important thing is that each time you start filling the cache, it's slower for the first build. The first time, the time that the ACP instance that you are reaching when running your MVN commands, if that ist instance does not have your artifact on the local cache, then it has to contact Gfrog, follow the redirects, get the file, serve it, and persist it on the local cache. So we saw a random, uh, let's say, times for the first builds. What is sure is that one, two, eventually three builds are a bit slower for dependency resolution because you have to fill the cache. And that depends on where is the agent running your Maven command located. And even for a given build, you can have different agent. For instance, if you run Windows container that will spawn on Azure and that will reach one of the two Azure uh, ACP, while you might have Linux 11 on DigitalOcean and Linux 17 on AWS. Once the cache is fully used, then we saw a great increase in, in dependency resolution time. Like it's clearly faster than GFrog, which is a really good news. The amount of uh, speed difference depends a lot on the builds. So we cannot give a general rule. Sometimes it was the same order of magnitude. Sometimes it was three times faster. So the, it depends. Since we have a distributed system, it's not deterministic. You can have variation. The good thing for us is that it will decrease not only the amount of data that we download from Gfrog, but also the amount of time with pod agent being spawned. So that should help. Um, Hervé, can you explain the deployment plan that uh, we want to follow for which project, which scope to deploy uh, ACP by default? Uh, currently, we intend to use it on build plugin. So build plugin uh, function uh, used by almost every plugin on Jenkins CI organization, GitHub organization. And we also intend to uh, adapt uh, the other function in the shared pipeline library to be able to build uh, the BOM and the other uh, core, uh, core builds like uh, Jenkins, uh, ACT, uh, ATH, and other uh, various uh, builds. Function to start testing on BUM 
ETH, Jenkins Core, and other non plugin Maven builds. And, and the bomb build is enormous. That's the one that runs what, 100 or 200 concurrent parallel tasks, each one checking out large chunks of code and performing many tests. So I, I think the bomb bandwidth improvements should be substantial, right? Yep. That's, that's, a, that's got to be expensive on bandwidth because it's enormously expensive on compute. Makes sense. Um, the plan is that, as we said, we'll add a dedicated issue plus send an email for plugins ACP activation. I'd like to also finish um, the functionality I want to add, uh, which is uh, and, uh, uh, which is the ability to skip the artifact caching proxy uh, by uh, adding a skip artifact caching proxy label on pull request so developers can opt out on their pull request on demand. For that, I have to ensure the GitHub app I'm using to retrieve labels is installed everywhere and the same for the GitHub key tools I'm using to retrieve the labels. Pair, pair, opt out. And um, another opt out by default that works today will be changing the Jenkins file of the project, either on a pull request or principal branches. And the call to build plugin should have use artifact caching proxies set to false. That it's the other way that is working today of opting out. But that one is a bit more cumbersome than adding a label on pull request. Yeah, However, I, I want to point that out. That's awesome just to be able to just add the label and, and opt out. I mean, huge. Is to uh, the Jenkins file by setting argument use artifact caching proxy so giving giving the choice that will provide different ways of opting out if there is any issue so right now we let at least for a transitional period we let developer being able to opt out if they feel like it's causing mayhem after some times once the everything will be built on the caching proxy and we will have proof that it's uh, working as expected, we will remove that opt out ability at the moment on time. Because we don't want someone starting to build a lot of things that will directly go to Shifrog, given the sensitivity of that topic. But right now it's transition period, so for, for the upcoming trimester, that opt out should be there. So is there any question things unclear attention points or is that plan of action is okay for everyone there it's a good plan and i i can report that the eight or ten or twelve plugins that had artifact caching proxy enabled are all building successfully multiple times and show no performance regression i don't care if they improve performance i i don't see anything that i could statistically call a performance regression so that's great Cool. So the initial subset is a set of 10 plugins, including the one we have. Uh, hang on, I'll give you an exact count. It's if we search the, the one, attributes, two. I think it's eight or 10, something like that. I count 14, two, four, 14, six, oh. eight, 10, 12, 13. 13. Sorry, off by one error. 13. So it's not the thousand plugin we have, but still. That's yeah, a representation of different sized plugin, right? Exactly. Some of, uh, some of them are very small and very important to me and others are very large and very important to me. They are all important to you. Um, also, we confirmed first Stefan and I and then uh, Hervé and I, we have checked as a team 
that we have access to a lot of metrics. In Datadog, we can watch uh, resource usages from the point of view of the pods. We have access to the logs and the logs, the access logs of the container allows us to know for a given request if it was served from the cache or if it was, we have the timing, we are able to correlate the timing if it was uh, served from GFrog. Uh, also, as Hervé pointed out this morning, we also have the ability to check on the Azure portal, the metrics on the file system used for the caching, which are dedicated. Uh, because there are different, we need, we could eventually have to resize. Right now it's 50 gigabyte and we use only one, but it might increase. So we have to follow that part. And the IOPS, the amount of IO operation per second. Uh, right now we have the, let's say the default low cost class for IOPS, which has a, a, a threshold. It can burst punctually, but the quality of uh, the uh, associated file system is not that high. However, for now, we cannot know because when we use the few plugin, we need to see a full, fully fledged CI Jenkins IO with all built. So we will have to watch these metrics from Kubernetes Datadog point of view, from Azure system point of view, and follow them on the future. The more we will increase the usage. But what we see now is that Nginx uses a lot of memory to have the most frequently used uh, cached item in memory served by itself. The machines behind is also caching the file system like Linux naturally does. So that part uh, uh, is another layer of caching from memory, which protect and makes us safe from uh, reaching too much IOPS. But with the BOM, I think the BOM will be more impactful, but we currently over provision the size of the container to be sure we are uh, we are okay. So right now the metrics shows that the machines are doing nothing. So that's really good news for the test we did. Uh, so to be sure I understood, so you, you're already comfortable that you've got Datadog based measurements to help understand the performance characteristic of the caching proxy. Yes. So if we were to overload it, you would see you would see that indicated in the Datadog metrics that you're gathering. Yes, exactly. And we have we have lever to improve uh, performance. As uh, right now, the disk we are using are uh, low IOPS, and we can greatly increase their class. So if needed, we can. We have uh, some. Uh, we are all good. Great, thank you. Okay, so that's that's wonderful. So we we probably then want a have someone watch those metrics when we first enable bomb to try it because the first bomb run will will put a lot of load, I would assume, on something. I think uh, enabling the opt in, the opt out for this. Uh... Or well, just uh, the build plugin will uh, right. yeah. greatly increase the load. Okay. Duplicated them, but we still have more resources leverages. Scaling up, scaling horizontally, increasing. Cache disk size, uh, switching cache disk to a better IOPS quality level. We have plenty. So we are fairly optimistic on the outcome, but we will have to watch metrics, what the metric says. Any question? Okay, so my proposal for is that uh, we have the last pull request for the label. Once that pull request is merged, we can immediately send an email to the developers that will uh, let 24 hours before really applying the change. Is that okay? It let one full day if anyone complains or if anyone uh, objects saying, no, that is dangerous or is there is something important that I don't want to use ACP. Does that make sense for you? I don't know if someone objects, what will 
we do. We will teach him application. how to avoid uh, ACP by uh, setting a flag, we which is not a them. flag caching proxy enabled to false. We cannot them and we put them in the same brig as Olivier and Tyler, as we said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the objection, realistically. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. yeah, I understand that could be really frustrating if someone says, uh, I got that issue and we are not able to deliver it, but we have to listen to the users. So we open the okay. discussion and we see if there is an objection. If there is no objection, then we can proceed. I will be the, f the first and the most frustrated person if we have to not roll out that change. Well, well we we've, for your coffee. we've had this before, right? We had a, we had a variant of this before without any complaints. So, so Olivier had deployed something like this previously, and we, we actually reverted that deployment when we saw that it didn't seem to, to help performance. At that time, we didn't care about bandwidth consumption. And so, so I think I think we're ready to announce it. And if there are objections, um, yes, we give time for objections, but it would take a very significant objection to stop us from deploying this. We we've got to get our bandwidth use down. Or a hey. big check if they want to keep for I mean, yeah, that that's also a solution. I mean, if someone puts twenty five k per month. I don't mind stopping working on that and paying G4. Ah, I mean, ah, they have I, never I, offered. I they have yeah. never offered to charge us. They have, <laughs> if we give them fresh, if we give them fresh money, I'm sure they will accept. <laughs> anyway, uh, is there anything else about the ACP? Okay, so the next priority is working on these items, and then we will start experimenting on BOM, and we will uh, report. Uh, next week, uh, the status, given we have forced them, we might have some delay. Since we have a weekly report from Gifrog, next week uh, should already show some things, but maybe one week is not enough, so we might have to wait two weeks before seeing real progress. Okay, unless someone objects, uh, next issue, control GitHub action version are pinned and tracked. Yeah, so I have to do this one yesterday, so it's it's not done yet. Okay. Do you feel you will be able to walk on it in the upcoming yes, week? Yes, because I feel it's super easy. So I I hope I will be able to do some. Okay. The I goal shouldn't is to say that it's it's sim. <laughs> it's sim. <laughs> so Hervé mm -hmm. cooked that some of our GitHub actions uh, that are not necessarily up to date. In that example, uh, we use Tidbeck's GitHub app token action. Uh, the proposal is to enable Dependabot on these repositories. So Dependabot will easily keep track of that. Why not update CLI? Because with update CLI, we would have to write a lot of code for each GitHub action. Given that in an ideal world, we should get away from GitHub action to a full Jenkins build. Uh, the proposal was to use Dependabot and just ensure that Dependabot is enabled for these GitHub action packages. Any objection? Unclear thing? Okay, so we'll add it to the next milestone. Next element, publicates um, uh, the new cluster in the new network. So, Hervé, are you okay to report the status and the upcoming phases? Um, I can do it if so, you're not sure. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, the cluster is uh, up and running. Uh, the artifact caching proxy is running on it. And the next steps are the migration of uh, all current uh, services running on prod public AHS. Okay. Um, so the issue mentions a list of services. We might need to update it. Some services will be migrated to the new public cluster. Some services will be migrated to the new private cluster, such as release CI, after the code sign change and after the LTS, if it's okay for everyone. Yes. 
some services will not be migrated. So we'll just double check with Olivier, but the proposal is to not migrate the Grafana Prometheus stack because we are not using it. Prometheus seems to be in a bad shape. Our installation, not the software itself. The software itself is working very well. But we have Datadog, fully fledged Datadog. We don't see any upcoming risk for Datadog going away. So right now, instead of paying resources for storage and compute on Grafana that we don't use, I propose that we don't migrate them to the new cluster. We will destroy the whole cluster, releasing these resources. And then we could start in the future the topic of if we need a Grafana stack for collecting traces for CI Jenkins IO, for instance, or additional metrics, logs, tracing collection that we cannot implement or don't want with Datadog, that will be another topic. But right now, the goal is to avoid duplicating when one of the two tools is not used by us anymore. It was used in the past and it, it has been a great help, but we don't since at least one year. Um, in terms of timeline, Hervé, is it okay if we put public gates on hold for the upcoming 10, 14 days? Time for us to finish working on the bomb. And eventually, if we have time, we can start planning for public gates. Is that okay for you? Yes. This is not. Yeah, of course. We can absolutely spend time on preparing the planning and reviewing the list of services and update the issue. But I propose that we wait uh, for a, uh, for a next week at least. And we will have a sub issue with the database. Yes, absolutely. We will need to find a way to um, to have the database, which is on the older system, to be reachable when we will migrate. We have experimented elements. So that's part of the discussion, depends on the planning we, we, want, we want to try. ACP handles way more things such as BAM. Any issue or thing related to that survey that you want to mention or is that okay? I don't remember what we said on that topic. No, it's okay. It's okay, um, it's uh, almost the same for the private cluster. Okay. Um, uh, yep. has been prepared, but yeah. Um, we can stand by while uh, we are going to first time and finishing mm -hmm. the Works well now. Um, next issue is playwright tool in our agent images. Uh, Stefan, can you give us? You know what? I still don't. I was not able. I wasn't able last week, and I forgot why you kept it open. But it's done, and you wanted to do something to close it, but I forgot what. Deploy it to production. Oh, yes. which you did uh, last Friday, if I'm correct. So is it? Can I let you close the issue? Yes, with pleasure. Thank you. By the way, thanks for handling this one, Stefan, because not only you had it, the tool deployed last Friday with, but also I forgot it's to mention. 56, if I remember correctly. So Playwright was on 055. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Age and Template 056 provides updated GDKs for all GDKs. We had the Timurin latest update for 8, 11, 17, and 19. Um, also, that was done along the playwright. So thanks a lot for that one. And finally, the last issue is realign repo Jenkins CI org mission. Uh, so we focused on ACP. Um, I found an L chart that will allow us on that topic to have uh, HA LDAP. So uh, I'm currently playing around with that on the local uh, cluster. If possible, that's a note for everyone. I propose that we might want to test that new HA LDAP on the new public Kates cluster. 
So if we need to enable authentication, we should migrate LDAP uh, as soon on that new system, because that will allow us a green blue deployment easily. Uh, that's all uh, I did. I'm late on trying to write, and we weren't able, Mark and I, to co work on the uh, writing something for the community about enabling authentication. Yeah, I, I've still got that action item, Damien. Right now, the, the, the analysis of the reports indicates that the realignment won't actually fix the majority of the issues. Yep. So the reporting that we're seeing hints that <clears throat> the the access that this would change are not the major problems. And so we're trying to resolve the major problems by other means. Mirror uh, repos are not the major problem. Any question on that? Nope, okay. Uh, we had a few new issues. Um, so update uplink Jenkins IO project dependencies. So that one is not priority, but thanks for opening this one. Because while trying to operate uplink, a we saw that that image has not been updated since months, if not years. It's still using Node.js 9, which is... Uh, it's as if I had Jenkins running with GDK6. I'm just a bit exaggerating, but still, uh, it's not the LTS version of Node. Of course, bumping that version might have side effects, so that need a bit of time. Um, and of course, all the internal dependencies within that image. Is that correct, Hervé, or did I miss something else? No, it looks good. Uh, so we should add a... Uh... A related issue to migrate the PostgreSQL database and maybe another one to migrate uh, the log collection from Sentry to maybe Datadog. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they can ingest uh, this kind of log. Too flexible. Applying Jenkins.io Sentry. Sentry replacement or access. Placement or access. Okay. Um, we'll have to create issues in terms of planning. I assume we won't be working on that one for the upcoming two weeks. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> so that will go to the backlog. Yeah. Document the code signing. Fine, but yeah. I mean, it works. There is no urge to do it until we we have a CV, of course. We, ah, we should... I'm sure we have some. Yeah. Um, and to remove Jenkins, so your pages aren't accessible and indexed anymore. Uh, fun one. Sounds like that the deployment process uh, does not delete pages when deploying, it just adds contents. So each time we remove a page from Jenkins IO, we need a manual operation. I don't see that as a problem, but it has to be documented on both Jenkins IO website first in the contributing section saying, if you open a pull request, please open an help desk issue. And it has to be documented on our side with a runbook that say, hey, go there, delete that file, etc. And we automate it. That instead, we we can, but the problem it is a known problem that has existed for many years. But so, it's not a problem. It's not a problem right. for me. It's a feature. Right. It, well, it's a it's a known behavior. Bug or feature is a is a is a subjective yeah. question, but okay. it is a known behavior from many years. So so and, yes, yeah. we could automate it, but in, I would argue yeah. its priority is low on automating it. Of, yep. uh, of course, but uh, I've asked uh, Daniel if he knew why mm -hmm. we behave like that. And, yeah, it's just uh, because there and isn't any particular reason to behave like that. That you are correct. There is there is no Daniel's answer would have been my answer because that's how okay. it behaves. 
that's a, a, sort of a, a terrible answer, but that was the re that's the real answer. It's just that's the way it's written. Oh, Olivier's answer on that last time we discussed that, but it was almost two years ago, was okay. The seven last time that someone from the community wanted to remove a page, it broke Jenkins IO. So based on the record history, automating deletion only only led to losing data, which means you need to build a certain level of trust before having a fully updated thing. And okay. that's also my point of view because yeah, uh, you have a website on a Docker image on a, on the paper that works, but as soon as you need to roll back, uh, it's complicated. The issue with Jenkins IO, it's not one machine with one container and one instance. That would be easy to automate in that case. In the case of Jenkins IO, you have a distributed system that has local cache that sometimes read on a centralized bucket where the file should be deleted. And then you have another distributed system of CDN that can be decached. So you have two distributed systems that depend on each other. Trust me, if you want to automate deletion on these cases, you are losing your safety nets. I'm sure okay. they can do something no, no with the label, creating a PR and everything, no? So the-, uh, the... But, uh, At least I have some response, uh, some history knowledge. Now, I understand of how frustrating that kind of answer can be. The reason is that I don't trust myself. I don't trust, I don't trust anyone on the six there to be able right now to automate that with success. Oh, I, I don't want to do it right now, but uh, at least now I know why it's yep. like that and how Perfect. to and some hint about how to remove page. Jeez. Exactly. It's manually in the bucket. Okay, we are in sync. My goal was to provide just um, elements to understand why. So now we can think about how to automate it for success. And for me, the first and immediate step that we should take is document that process, given the huge work and activity that happened during the past months by Kevin and Mark and all the doc SIG, that kind of thing will happen more and more. And once we have documented it and we are at ease on the procedure, then we can automate easily. And I'm sure you will have brilliant ideas that we never talked about for doing that. I have no doubt on that, but we need to reach some layers of trust in ourselves before. One, one I thought about is automatically purge the new or as a visited page, looking at the modified file in the pull request and running a curl purge on this URL. The question is when we'll see. But yeah, but now documentation, short term documentation, both Jenkins.io and Runbook, plus uh, clean up this page to test the whole operation one time. Long term, automate cleanup. One of the ideas that has been cancelled by Olivier was to build a Jenkins.io Docker image with the doc root within that would have removed the need for that bucket and it would have been fully stateless on our cluster, removing one constraint. That worked very well but the time required to build the image and deploy the image and the constraint of our audit auditability with Kubernetes management records, the combination of everything made it really complicated and slow. That's the main pain because security advisory need to be published quickly. And the amount of time required to build the image and deploy it was out of question when publishing secret advisories. So that's why I think Hervé's ideas might be a better and good way, automating both cleaning up on the buckets and the clean cache cleaning. 
Any question? Okay. Uh, new issue, frequent page of duty alerts. Disk space is below one gigabyte. We speak about that two weeks ago. I've put on written way and now we have actions on that. Uh, mainly updating CI, Jenkins, IO and other controller setup to be sure that all age and virtual machines are ephemeral, especially the Windows one. And then if we keep having the image, we will have to find if there are failed builds, and if they are, we will have to increase the disk size. That's the summarized version. If you want details on why and what it's written on the issue, don't hesitate to ask. Oh, finally, ask Linux Foundation to renew our Jira license. Uh, as Mark pointed out, the Jira license we have is need to be renewed for issues. Jenkins IO to continue working. That will be a Linux Foundation ticket asking them to update, and they will take care of that. Um, if it's okay for you, I will take it, but I don't mind having anyone else uh, pairing with me. I think uh, Mark uh, already assigned himself. Oh. And okay. The uh, bonus okay. question will, will be what will happen when uh, Atlassian will um, build their user? But it's a question for later. Yep. We will stop the service. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. OK, sorry. I was a bit slow today because of the ECP. I don't see other new item. Something else? Mm, uh, I got my few PR, but that's fine. It's down in there. OK. So I will stop sharing screen, I will stop recording, and then see you next week.